the most delightfully fascinating character in the realms of mystery, Charlie Chan. In his efforts to trace the murderer of Ellen Landini and Dr. Swan, Charlie Chan, the Honolulu detective, finds himself facing a problem of no mean proportions. Motives include every guest in the house. Clues are intangible. That is, excepting one clue. The revolver used by the murderer to kill Swan. That, Charlie Chan has found. It is morning at Pine View, and as Sheriff Holt comes down the stairs to the living room, he comes face to face with pretty Leslie Beaton. Oh, good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Miss Beaton. Well, we had one night of undisturbed rest. Yes, although you and Inspector Chan were abroad early. Yes, the inspector's gone off to Reno with Mr. Ward. Dad's going to meet them there. And you were left behind as guardian of law and order. (laughs) Not so much that as... Well, after Swan's death, we, neither Chan nor myself, believe that Pine View should be left completely unguarded. Then you don't think that our fears... Mr. Romano's, my brother's, and mine are entirely unfounded. I mean, there is the possibility that... that something might happen to us. I don't know what to say about that. The whole thing is, well, more than mysterious. So far, we haven't yet found a definite clue pointing toward anyone in particular. Plenty of people here, Romano, Swan, Ryder, yourself, and your brother... All have motive enough as far as police are concerned, but to find motive, opportunity, and direct evidence all combined in any one person, well, there just isn't any such combination. Hello, Sheriff. Did you see Ward before he left? Yes, I did, Mr. Ryder. I wondered if you remembered to take our Singh's glasses to the opticians to be fixed. I believe he did say something about that. By the way, I didn't know that our Singh wore glasses. He hasn't recently. Broke them about a month ago, Dudley said, and, well, you know our thing. He wouldn't think of getting them fixed himself. No, I suppose not. Uh, by the way, if it isn't asking questions not to be answered by the law, what does Chan expect to find in Reno? Well, that's hard to say, Mr. Ryder. A detective never passes up any opportunity of learning something. They've gone to Reno to question Landini's secretary. Miss Meacher? <laughs> they won't learn anything from her. She's as close-mouthed as a a clam. Yes, I've noticed, though, that Mr. Chan invariably does find out what he wants to know. Well, it doesn't seem to be getting him any nearer a solution in this case. I think Mr. Chan has found out a great deal more than you think, Mr. Ryder. Yes? Then why doesn't he do something about it? Make an arrest. Making an arrest, Mr. Ryder, is nothing but a technical move. Obtaining the evidence that will lead to a conviction is the real job. Plenty of detectives have known before who the murderer was in a case like this, but making an arrest without evidence to convict is, well, silly, that's all. So, you think that Chan does know who the murderer is? I didn't say that, Mr. Ryder, but Mr. Chan and I know that besides the murderer, three people were alive. Sooner or later, one, if not all, of these people will trip themselves up. And when they do, the net will close and close fast. Well, I wish you luck. The net can't close in too fast for me. Well, if you want me for any more questioning, I'll be down on the lakefront. I'm going to give Dudley's boat a looking over. If I need you, I'll find you, Mr. Ryder. Disagreeable, isn't he, Sheriff? In some ways. Sarcastic. I'll bet he's a good engineer. And a pretty good fellow underneath. Then I take it, Sheriff. 
that you don't think Mr. Ryder is guilty. I'm a poor sheriff. I go on the belief that everybody's a good fellow until I find them different. Well, I think you're a good sheriff. Oh, you do? Yes. Don't ask me why. I just do, that's all. Oh, I've sure learned a lot from Mr. Chan. I wouldn't have known where to start with this murder case. Doggone it. Think of the situation. Four men. Ryder, Swan, Ward, and Romano. All ex-husbands of Landini. All hating her. Then your brother, heir to her fortune. Ireland, her pilot, jealous of the dickens of your brother. Cecile, jealous of Landini because of Ireland. Now Singh, mad at Landini about her not telling Dudley Ward about his son. I really don't see how you make anything of it. Oh, oh well, let's forget this murder mystery for a while and, and take a walk. There's a place up on top of the hill there, huh? I want you to see. Well, wait till I change my shoes, and I'll be with you right away. Meanwhile, over in Reno, Inspector Chan and Mr. Ward get out of Ward's car and cross the street to the hotel where Sam Holt, the sheriff's father, stands waiting them. Ah, I perceive Mr. Sam Holt waiting with all the patience those who live in perpetual darkness must of necessity possess. Yes, I feel so sorry for old Sam. Yes. Greetings, Mr. Holt. I hope we have not kept you waiting. Nary a bit, Mr. Chan. I just got here a few minutes ago. Cash Shannon, uh, Don's deputy, drove me over. Have you inquired? Is Miss Meacher in hotel? Yes. Uh, Cash asked at the desk. Then we will go directly to her room. I note several gentlemen whose appearance leads me to believe they are members of Fourth Estate. I would avoid their questioning until such time as we have more plentiful information to impart to the press. Well, it's number 29, so I guess we don't have far to go. Somehow, Mr. Chan, now that we're here, I'm almost dreading this interview. Uh, By the way, Mr. Chan, I did what you asked me to about the gun. I left word for them to call me here. Splendid, Mr. Holt. That's it. Oh. I perceive this is number 29. You come in. Oh, it's you, Mr. Ward. Yes, Miss Mitcher. And this is Mr. Holt and Mr. Chan from Honolulu. I'm glad indeed to meet you both. Miss Mitcher, I note from papers spread on desk that you are busy. I shall be brief as possible. How long have you been secretary to Madame Landini? Over seven years. Have you ever heard... At any time, Madame Landini, say anything that might lead you to believe that she considered her life in danger? Never. Of course, she carried a revolver, but that was because of possible robbery. I'm sure she was not afraid. She had no reason to be. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't want to interfere with Mr. Chan's questioning, but I must know. I can't wait. I have heard it rumored that my wife, my former wife, had a son. My son. About whom she never told me. Do you... Oh, you, you can understand my feelings. I I want you to tell me, was there any truth in this rumor? I... I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Madam never mentioned the matter to me. There was no correspondence that might have led you to suppose any such condition to exist? None, Mr. Chet. There are three, or rather four men, I should like to question you regarding. John Ryder... Madam's second husband? I know. She never corresponded with him? I don't imagine she saw of him anymore. Have you the slightest idea why she separated from him? Well, I can give you a notion. Madam has had scrapbooks of news clippings from all over the world. I ran across this one uh, the day before yesterday. Let me see. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, this is it. Yeah. Ellen Landini snowed in. Recently divorced singer... In a cabin up in the ravine. Ellen Landini, formerly the wife of Dudley Ward, California millionaire, but who was recently married to John Ryder, is snowed in for the winter at Calico Mine. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Snow was 25 foot deep that year. Remember John saying they burn candles all day. It has aspects of romantic situation rather than grounds for divorce. That's exactly what I said to Madam when I read it. 
Oh, I, I was somewhat younger then. Madam burst into laughter. Romantic, she cried. Romantic to be shut up in one room for eternity with the most colossal bore since the world began. A sullen egoist with the conversational powers of a mummy. In a week I loathed him. In another I despised him. In a month I could have killed him. And he me. I, I, I'm quoting Madam, you understand. Yes, yes, quite. Now to proceed, and in course of proceeding, we arrive at Mr. Louis Romano. Romano? Well, we haven't seen him in months. You don't mean to say that he's in the neighborhood. He was guest at Mr. Ward's the night Madam was murdered. What, if you please, was her attitude toward him? Oh, she tolerated him. A harmless idiot. Why she married him, I don't know. I don't think Madam did either. She soon sent him on his way. Yes, after making some sort of settlement. Uh, tell me, did she ever make that new will leaving her estate to Mr. Beaton? She did, but it was never signed. Then Louis Romano inherits her estate? I'm afraid he does. Do you think uh, he knew? If he didn't, it wasn't his fault. He kept writing, trying to find out. He wrote me privately. I did not tell, but he may have written her lawyers in New York. No, I, I'm i certain, Mr. Chan, that Louis Romano knew he was her heir. Indeed, it seems to be very much that way. Yes? Oh, Mr. Sam Holt. One minute, please. Uh, hello? Yes. Yes? What? Yeah, it does, kind of. Yeah, thank you. What is it, Sam? Uh, Mr. Chan, that was the Bureau of Investigation at San Francisco. Yes? About the bullet which killed Madame Landini? Yes. It was not fired from Landini's gun at all. It was fired from the same gun as was used to kill Dr. Swan. Developments proceed apace. Landini's gun was fired, but was not the one used to kill the singer. And Romano... We must not forget that Romano knew he was Landini's heir. After your sponsor's message, Inspector Chan will be with us again with another of his Chinese sayings. Chan, I take it from the smile that you're ready to benefit us with some Chinese philosophy. Mr. Wilson, I'm thinking of two young people I left behind at Pine View, Miss Beaton and Sheriff. Yes, Mr. Chan? As the distant voices of the cutters to the youthful green shoots in the rice paddy, so are the admonitions and advices of age, warnings remote and of a world of Apart, youth finds in society of youth all that it desires, a paradise on earth. Thank you, Mr. Chan, and good night. Honored indeed, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> 